G'day guys and gal, this might be a bit of a hot take, but you can't judge someone by their gene seed. Space Marines are engineered to be loyal to their Primarchs, so it's no wonder that most of each Trader Legion followed their daddy's footsteps to hell. Despite that though, about one third of each Trader Legion was still loyalist and required purging while some of the best characters in the entire setting, Garvil Loken, Rylanor, Saul Tarvitz, were from Trader Gene Seed. So it may not surprise you that there are a number of incredibly effective and deadly loyalist Space Marines chapters that use parts of Trader Gene Seed or literally the entire thing to create their Space Marines. Belsarius Call has even used Trader Gene Seed in the new Primaris. Is it heresy? Yes. Are the chapters that use Trader Gene Seed incredibly badass? Also yes, and that is worth talking about. Before we get started, you've probably heard of Manscaped by now, a massive supporter of the channel and a brand whose products I genuinely use all the time. The Lawnmower 4.0 to keep the hedges trimmed. The Plow 2.0, a single-bladed razor that deletes my neck beard without a fuss, on top of various other things like ball deodorant that annihilates stanky wiener. But the star of today is the Boxers 2.0, a set of super comfy, slickly styled, and very breathable boxes for any situation. If you finally manage to get a girl to take your pants off, you don't want to ruin the moment with some cringe undies. Instead, if you had Manscaped's black and gold, pinstripe, or even the safe all black, you'd be in the clear to finish the job. After all, you probably would have also used a few other Manscaped products by that point, meaning you'd be at peak hygiene and groom. So to get 20% off anything at Manscaped, as well as free international shipping, then use my link in code MageGill below. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today, we'll go over each of the loyalist chapters that are currently using or suspected of using Trader Gene Seed. Uh, let's get into it. The first of these loyal, totally not heretical boys are the Minotaurs. The Minotaurs are extremely brutal, effective, and do not question orders. They are the attack dogs of the High Lords of Terror and have even attacked and killed a custodian guard because of those orders. So it may come as no surprise that the Minotaurs are derived off Iron Warrior Gene Seed and were created during the Curse founding during the 36th millennium, a founding where strange experiments were performed on the Gene Seed, which resulted in unusual chapters. The Minotaurs are not cursed to fail though, no. They are beasts, easily one of the most powerful loyalist chapters and the guys the High Lords send when they want to get something annihilated without mercy. After recently beating some Death Guard, they discovered their Gene Seed was infected and are now racing back to Terra to purify their chapter and prevent the loss of their future. It makes sense, the only way to beat an unbeatable force is to prevent their recruitment. Another easy well-known one now, we have the Space Sharks, the Kacharodons. This one isn't as explicit, but it's heavily implied that the Space Sharks have a mix of Raven Guard and Night Lord Gene Seed. This explains their terror tactics, their predatory battle doctrine, and their physical deformities, such as their their black eyes and pale skin. The Raven Guard and Night Lords were always considered to be closer in aspect than all other legions, merely being different due to circumstance. The Space Sharks prove this by genuinely being one of, if not the most powerful and fearsome loyalist chapter in the entire setting. After all, these guys once fought the actual Night Lords at their own game and came out victorious. They, along with the Minotaurs, are known as the chapter that is sent when renegades need to be crushed and destroyed, never failing. Their chapter master Tybros is the largest space marine to ever live and likely uses Corvus Corax's siege power claws as his weapons. A bit more of a tongue-on-cheek one, since it definitely comes across as a prank by call, is the Sons of the Phoenix chapter. Their iconography looks like Empress Children, their name is very Empress Children-like, and their color scheme is also very Empress Children. So clearly, they are Imperial Fist successors. Yeah, right. It's been confirmed that Cole did use some Trader Gene Seed with the new Primaris, and this is a new Primaris only chapter. However, obviously Cole just can't fucking say that, so instead he lists them as a generic Imperial Fist successor, despite them having no semblance to the Sons of Dawn and their battle tactics resembling Great Crusade era Empress children. Something also sus about them is that the Thousand Sons also once attacked them in order to kidnap a few of their battle brothers for arcane experiments, perhaps because of the nature of their Gene Seed. Either way, you ain't fooling me, G-dubs. I know a slut when I see one. Now onto a fan favorite, we have the Magpies, the Blood Ravens. Officially, their Gene Seed origins are unknown and have been heavily buried. Attempts to analyze their Gene Seed or find out their origins in records ends in failure. It definitely appears to be a deliberate cover-up. That, my friends, is because the Blood Ravens use modified Thousand Suns Gene Seed. 
I strongly believe. They clearly can't just use raw Thousand Sun gene seed, otherwise they would mutate or become dust marines. And even if they did use it without issue, gene seed scanning would reveal it. No, I believe that someone experimented on Thousand Sun's gene seed to stabilize it, removing some of its psychic potency, but also preventing Titsnitch from fucking with it. The evidence of this is the fact that the Blood Ravens are absolute sluts for knowledge. Their war cry has been eerily similar to that of the Thousand Suns. They also have a much higher than average level of librarians in the chapter, with their chapter master having to be a psyker. While there has not been an official confirmation, the extensive efforts the Inquisition has gone to hide the Blood Raven origin, combined with their battle doctrine, physical attributes, and fuck me, even their paint scheme, clearly indicates that they use modified Thousand Sun gene seed. Another cheeky Primaris chapter made by Call are the Covenant of Fire. Officially, they are Salamander successes, which seems to check out due to the fire in their name. But when you look at their symbol, things start to get a bit sus. Okay, fine. Just because they have a word bearer looking logo, it doesn't mean they are successes of them. But when we look at their battle doctrine, it starts to get a bit more than sus. They crave knowledge and lore, especially ones that can illuminate and enlighten them. At the same time, they are very zealous, purging heretics and heretical knowledge and material with extreme prejudice. However, other than those two hints plus their symbol, there really isn't much else indicating whether or not these guys are word bearers or salamander successes. If only we got official art of one of them without a helmet, we could tell very quickly. Now for another potential Emperor's Children successor chapter, this one with some serious history. We have the Death Eagles. The Death Eagles were another name for the Emperor's children during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy, and it's believed that some of the loyal Empress children that fought against their own legion reverted back to that name. Some of them are even believed to have survived the Horus Heresy and scouring, rebranding themselves into Ravenguard successes by painting the armor black and doing their best to look exactly like Ravenguard. This is further backed up by the fact that the Death Eagles have been around since the end of the Heresy, as well as the fact that the OG Death Eagles published in the White Dwarf magazine in 1990 show them painted in white and purple, much more like the Emperor's children. Once again though, this one isn't super confirmed, but an interesting one nonetheless. Now onto another potential Iron Warrior successor, we have the Silver Skulls. Whilst it's not super clear if these guys are genuine Iron Warriors, or if they were founded from Ultramarines in order to pay tribute to Barbarous Dantioch for literally saving the Imperium, we can still suss them out and make an assumption. Once again, the Silver Skulls are a very old chapter, dating back to the second founding. This means that in a similar vein to the Death Eagles, they could have been made up of loyalist Iron Warriors. Gilliaman heavily respected the Loyalist Iron Warriors, especially Barbaros Dantioch, for helping the Ultramarines and literally saving his life. So I can imagine he would have covered for the remaining Loyalists, allowing them to pose as Ultramarine successes. After all, they literally have Dantioch's mask as their logo. When Gilliaman returned, he said that the Silver Skulls were amongst his sons, but he easily could have just been continuing to cover for them. Their battle tactics also don't really line up with Ultramarines. Their paranoia means that they will only enter into a battle when their librarians receive good omens from the Emperor. They are extremely steadfast and unbreakable, achieving many victories against all odds. They are also completely unfazed by their losses and fight with an intense zeal that can be off-putting to their allies. Definitely sounds a lot more like Iron Warriors than Ultramarines. Regardless if they're just a tribute to the Loyalist Iron Warriors, actual Iron Warriors, or a blend between the two, they are still worth mentioning on this list. The Soul Drinkers are an interesting case. They were one of the first Imperial Fist successor chapters and they date back to the second founding. However, at some point shit got weird and Chaos intervened in the chapter, causing them to have a high rate of mutation, go renegade, still be kind of loyalist, stand trial for being renegades, had their gene seeds scanned and revealed not to be Imperial Fist's successor before then sacrificing their entire chapter to save the Imperial Fists. Shit got a bit wacky. But if they weren't Imperial Fist, then who the fuck were they? Well, I believe that they were probably originally Imperial Fist. I doubt Dawn would allow a traitor chapter to be made under his name with how angry he was at the time. But in saying that, Dawn did respect the loyalist elements of the traitor legions like Nathaniel Garo, so it's possible the chapter was a mix of numerous different lost legions, which would explain their confusing non-imperial fist gene seed. It's also possible that over the course of a few centuries, the agents of chaos swapped out soul drinker gene seed, hence making them more prone to mutation and corruption. After all, it was revealed that members of the chapter had secretly fallen to chaos and were trying to fuck shit up. The chapter also had a lot of librarians, something that is uncommon with the Imperial Fists. 
It's an interesting one, but since they were all killed and the results of the gene seed scan were never published, we just really don't know. In recent times, a Primaris chapter was formed in their honor, taking on their name, color scheme, and iconography. However, so far, it seems as if these guys are actual Imperial Fist successors and just pay homage to their significantly more heretical predecessors. Now we have the Sons of Antaeus. Created as a part of the Cursed Founding, these guys could be Death Guard successors. We all know the Cursed Founding was a time of no ethics, a lot of heresy, and wacky experiments. So them using Death Guard Gene Seed isn't a massive stretch, especially since they used Iron Warrior Gene Seed during the same founding. Officially, they are Ultramarine successors who are mutated to be larger, more resilient, and very hard to kill compared to other Space Marines. I call bullshit. That sounds exactly like the Death Guard with some people in the lore literally stating that they seem to be just as resilient as the Death Guard. The chapter is also very mysterious and keeps to themselves, leaving war zones and battlefields as soon as their duty is done. This could hint towards them being aware of their true lineage and not wanting to stick around long enough to arouse suspicion. Also like, when you want to keep your real nature hidden, you would pick the Ultramarines. It's the same as calling yourself John Smith when you're on the run from the cartel. So we've been able to find potential loyalist chapters for the Empress Children, Iron Warriors, Word Bearers, Night Lords, Death Guard, and Thousand Sons. The Alpha Legion are kind of somewhat definitely maybe loyalists, so they don't really count. That leaves us with the World Eaters and surprisingly, the Lunar Wolves that don't seem to have any notable successes. I do, however, suspect that Call would have created at least one of each from the new Primaris chapters, and GW have confirmed that there are numerous loyalist chapters with traded gene seed in play, so it's just a matter of time before they pop up. After all, the World Eaters before the Butchers Nows were actually pretty fun. Fucking awesome. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where there's not only a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai, but also a bunch of live action nude cosplay photos. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more heretically loyal content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.